Hello, ah, Kansas Log, May 22nd, May 20th, 2010. I just uh, started up this uh, video to uh, give y'all a little update by myself. <coughs> you know, I'm doing well, so is my mom. And for your information, my father is alive and well, so that rumor is false. My father is alive and well. Anyway, yeah. Uh, Anyway, with that, I don't want to talk about uh, some of my favorite uh, comedy people, but uh, I'd like to start off with uh, prefacing with, uh, talk, with referencing an old, a past video of mine, of which I have uh, made the complaint about uh, Regina Gomez replacing Nia Long on the Cleveland show. I mean, yeah, that was definitely like a trade down in comparison. Let's go to a clip of Nia Long. Dinner dance. Oh yeah, I'm going to the dance. Oh good. But not with you. You probably run me over and feed me to a bunch of rednecks. I just called my real dad. I'm going with him. And then uh, now, let's check out uh, Regina Gomez in comparison. When I get to New York, I'm gonna get stubborn. See a difference? Big difference. Regina is a whiny voice little brat, whereas uh, Nia was a, was a lot better. And then uh, another reference that was like uh, when they changed the voice when they changed the voice actress for Maggie Griffin. I mean, yeah, here's the first voice. This is an improvement, by the way. <laughs> And I tell you what, uh, this was a better change in comparison. You know, change it from, I forget her name, to Mila Kunis. Oops, that one never saw that tip. There's Mila. Exploited that way. Shut up, Mom. It's not your decision. I want to be exploited. Meh. Yeah, big difference. Big difference between the uh, voice actresses, you know. When they swear they did from whoever she was to Mila Kunis, that was an improvement because, you know, maturing the voice deepens naturally. Whereas in the Cleveland show, switching from me switching from Nia Long to Regina Gomez, that's a trade down. I mean, I, I, I gotta tell you my opinion. It must have been like uh, Seth MacFarlane and uh, Mike Henry must have had uh, too many drinks or something to decide to switch from Nia to Regina. Or I don't know. Or I don't know uh, whether it's uh, it was their decision or what Nia had in her head when she, when, uh, she left the show for that point. Yeah, I leave y'all with that. Uh, let's talk about uh, let's talk about famous comedy people. Uh, y'all know I like uh, I, li I like from class in the classics uh, Lucia Ball. I know, friends. Let me find me a Benjamin girl. Retired men down. This, this. You put that body, so you can copy it. Yeah, so all your problems is this little bottle. Find me a Benjamin. And I also like Red Skelton. We're going, okay, we're all going to the, uh, we're going to the, we're going, we're going to the parade. We got a float that we, now this float that we run, it looked like the back end of a Cadillac. But then something, and then something happened, and, uh, we had, and we don't know what happened, but we went out of control and, uh, and crazy, and we ended up in the McGriffin Park late. Two ducks slammed by, and one to the other and said, Gertrude, who had that thing? <laughs> Very funny people. I also liked, uh, I also liked Dick Van Dyke, Maritime Moore, and Bob Newhart. There's another good one. I like those classic people, but from today's, uh, from today's, from this generation, I like Tim Allen. He's a funny man. Yeah. <laughs> I was just remembering the uh, part where the one where he jammed up a day in the light socket. <laughs> but seriously though, he he does very good. He's he's a funny man. I also like Jerry Seinfeld. He's he's very funny. I watch his show every I watch his show every day on TBS. And you know, too bad got too bad and he could have done a lot. He could have done more shows, but, but whatever. That was his call there. He decided to add to nine seasons. 
I like Jerry Seinfeld. He's a funny man. You know, I would, I would, you know, I would definitely like to see this. You know, even as a video response from Jerry himself, his uh, view on autist, on autistic people, especially the high functioning autistics like myself. You know, and also think about this. I probably sound like Jerry Seinfeld. I'd probably sound like Jerry Seinfeld. And, you know, this could be a comedy routine for himself. You know, that he could do for autistics. Uh, yeah, so uh, I've just recently been introduced to this uh, autistic uh, boy, aut this uh, autistic uh, teenage boy here, and uh, and we and you know I was introduced, so he opened up to me right away, and then I, and then later at like uh, and then later at this picnic, this community picnic, he uh, I see him I see him over there, and uh, he wants to find he wants to meet himself a lady, so he's hanging out over there. I don't see him talking to the lady. She's just, uh, he's just uh, smiling and uh, being silent. I mean, he ain't gonna go anywhere unless he toss the, he does toss the ladies. But then again, that's part of the autism right there. He just uh, tends to blank out when he's not introduced to the people because he's scared of the uh, unknown. That's very common amongst the autistic people. Now, there's something else. You know, in today's society where everybody is glued to their computers and internet and all that, they're definitely closing themselves off from, from society. It's like, they're becoming autistic themselves. I mean, if they're not glued for the computer, they're definitely about as blank as that that, that, little, that teenage boy was. Yeah, I would, anyway, I would definitely like to hear uh, Jerry Seinfeld's uh, opinions and views or a comedy sketch about autistic people. Because I wanted to ask him about that. Oh yeah. Also, you know another another Jewish dude I like that is, that's, that strikes me as funny is Brad Garrick. You know from Everybody Loves Raymond. Also uh, doing the guy from Till Death. He also actually starred in an episode of uh, Seinfeld I read where he steals Jerry's car. So that was so that seemed kind of dumb. You know, I even read that he was he tried he tried out for Kramer. I mean, it's, I mean he definitely would not. I mean, I don't know if he would have been a better Kramer. I mean. Would he have been that crazy? I don't know. <laughs> I mean... Yeah! Yeah! Hi, Jer! <laughs> yeah, I think uh, Brad Garrett's a little bit more subtle, but yeah, I like him too. You know, I, and I have nothing against the Jewish people. I mean, they're people too, and I got nothing against the Jewish community. I mean, they have their views, and we have our views. Let's just leave it at that. I mean, they're all... They're all they're people, we're people. No problem. I know I, I said cross signals about that at past points. Oh, hey, you know, another dude I like? Cor Larry the quote unquote cable guy. Get her done! <laughs> Funny dude, you know. He definitely could be. He definitely had the trucker lift going from if he uh, wasn't the, being the cable guy. Yeah, I mean, I would definitely think that would have, uh, the way he was dressed, they would have called him Larry the Trucker Man. The Trucker Man. <laughs> yeah, very funny. Oh, and also, you know, speaking of impressions, uh, here's Pierre Cohen. Autobots, transform, and roll out. Bumblebee, I need you to go and spy the Decepticons. Let the, let's see what they're, go what they're doing over there. Dead, spot on, dead on, Pierre Cohen, right there. And I'm glad that, you know, aside from the Generation 1 series, they let him do the... He, he volunteered to do the voice of Optimus in the new movies, as well as in the video games. I mean, all the, of, of all the generations between the Optimus Primes and the Optimus Primal, Peter Cohen is Optimus Prime. Of all time. Anyway, that's uh, just uh, some of my opinions about some of the current and past comedians and uh, Seth Spike. Bring back Neil Long. Anyway, I'll leave y'all with uh, that and those impressions until next until another time when I have another thought or whatever. Have a good day. Peace.